Shimano's new power meter is accurate overall, but is ultimately flawed as a left-right system. Here's how I found out. So testing a power meter's accuracy is a tricky thing, and really there's no perfect way to do it. I've been riding with power for 15 years or so, back to the original wired power tap. And when I test power meters, what I do is run three, at least three meters simultaneously, uh, record each on a separate device with the same recording settings, uh, and then track the data over several weeks. Now I, in addition to just looking like a nerd rolling around with three head units on, um, I keep the head units on to just make sure that everything is recording properly on the ride. The real analysis takes place when I get back to the computer and can compare and look for trends. So the Shimano meter right out of the gate uh, looked to be very good going against uh, the trusty old power tap and uh, the Garmin Vector 3 pedals, which I have come to be very impressed by. So the, the very first ride I did, the uh, average watts for the Shimano was within a single digit, a single watt variance, I should say, uh, from the Garmin Vectors. So that was impressive. What was strange was that the left-right bounce was off. So I'm accustomed to seeing anywhere from like a 50-50 to maybe at most a 52-48 left to right balance. And the Shimano read for the whole ride 55-45. So after I saw that for a few rides, and, and uh, I will always calibrate the Shimano meter and all the other test meters before each ride, I did some investigative single leg journalism, meaning I just did some single leg drills uh, to see what I could suss out. And lo and behold, the left side on the Shimano meter reads higher than the right. So for instance, I'd be pedaling at what the Garmin Vector and the Power Tap said was 150 watts, and the Shimano would read a little bit higher with, when pedaling with the left leg. Then switch legs, again around that 150 watt mark, uh, the Shimano right would read lower by about 5 watts. And that was consistent, doing that on the rollers, doing that on the road. Uh, for a couple minutes on each leg at a time. So called Shimano, they said, oh, we've got it fixed. New firmware update, did that, no results. Got a second meter from Shimano and I installed it one crank at a time. So took off the first right crank, uh, put on the new right crank, and it was exactly the same as before uh, in that there was that left-right uh, discrepancy. And same thing with you know the new left crank. So my takeaway from that was two things. One, Shimano is very consistent in their production, uh, but <laughs> with this meter, it was also consistently wrong as far as the left-right specifics. Again, the, the total number was really good, and I used this meter along with the Vector 3s uh, to test a bunch of smart trainers uh, over the winter. So when using it, like most people use a power meter, which is just for the total number, I think it's fine. However, it's pricey at 1,500 pounds, uh, 1,550 US dollars, and one of the touted features is left-right. Um, I was initially disappointed that the left-right measurement was one-dimensional in that you just get the single number left and right. I was hoping it would be something a little more sophisticated judging by what Shimano's bikefitting.com indoor machinery offers, which is similar to the Pioneer system, where you can see uh, not just how much power you're producing on each side, but where in the pedal stroke you are producing uh, power and where in the pedal stroke your, your leg is dragging. That can be a little overwhelming when riding outside, but it would be interesting to have that data. So that, I was initially disappointed that the Shimano system did not offer that. But upon saying that the left-right measurement is off, that's a moot anyway. That just goes out the window. So a couple points on the construction of the meter. It is run on a single battery tucked inside the spindle. That can, and the left and the right are connected with a single wire. So that is different than most left-right systems that you see where they are uh, two separate battery systems. This is claimed at 300 hours. I didn't exhaust that battery. And it's charged with a little magnetic cable that snaps onto the side. You have to pull open a little plastic cover, which seems a little 
uh, I don't want to say suspect, it's not as bomb proof as the rest of the, the Shimano metal parts. It's more akin to the, if you're familiar with the, the DI2 plug-in system that, that uh, where you charge, like I say, at the bar end uh, or underneath the stem. It's that little piece of plastic you pull out. It's, I haven't broken any yet, but it seems like that could be a little bit stronger. Again, just in, in contrast to Shimano's typical bomb proof all metal construction. So again, the, I was impressed by how overall the total number was accurate. I was impressed when I looked at two meters broken into parts, how consistent Shimano was, uh, but I was disappointed in that the left right was consistently off. So this meter comes on a few uh, bike stock for 2018, for instance, the giant propelled disc. This is a cool thing. I think a high-end bike that costs upwards of $10,000 or pounds should come with a high-end power meter. Shimano obviously has the benefit of the integrated aesthetics. It looks cool, it doesn't look out of place. There's no you know, strange things bolted on. And Shimano, being experts in metal, should know how uh, metal reacts to changes in temperature and uh, other things that can affect a crank-based power system. Speaking of temperature, I did notice a little bit of fluctuation in how the mirror would read over the course of a long ride where temperature changed a little. So for instance, you know, go for a four hour, five hour ride on the weekend with a nice little half hour coffee stop in the middle where the bike is sitting out in the sun, start when it's cold, bike warms up over the course of a few hours and where the numbers would be uh, you know, in lockstep with the Garmin Vector and the power tap. At the start of the ride and for the first few hours, it would drift just a little uh, after it warmed up and then wouldn't, wouldn't come back uh, in alignment with the other two. So it seems like there's a little bit of work to be done on the temperature compensation front. So bottom line, it is a good first effort. Turns out power meters are a tricky thing to produce. If you just bought a bike or are thinking of buying a bike with a Shimano meter stock, uh, I think you'll be happy with the overall experience. You can certainly train with it very consistently. Just don't bother using any of the left-right functionality because you will be chasing your tail.